Alrighty, it's time for an extra bonus conversation about the names of amides. We don't do as many examples as students might like, so here's some opportunities to try some. Um, unsubstituted amides are the primary amides, the ones that have no extra things besides the one carbonyl carbon on the nitrogen. We're going to use the acid name, and you're going to change the ending to amide, as we've discussed previously. So these three comments, compounds shown here, formamide, acetamide, and propanamide are not too tricky. Hiding behind the box are some examples. Let's see what we have here. Oh, let's see if it works. Sometimes the tool is uncooperative. There we go. <clears throat> ah, some of these are those compounds and some of them are not. Let's see which one corresponds to which. One of these names in my line of names corresponds to the first compound. And when you look at these things carefully, an unsubstituted amide doesn't have much more than the description of the number of carbons attached to the nitrogen. And in this example at the bottom of the screen, this, car this amide has two carbons. And you have to know the prefix that corresponds to two carbons. And two carbons is acetamide. So that compound corresponds to acetamide. Nothing more to say because it's a simple amide with nothing more than a carbonyl on the nitrogen. Form amide then would be one carbon fewer. It looks pretty funny because it doesn't have very many parts. And propanamide would be, what then? Would be three carbons, two, three. But the third carbon is going to have nitrogen on it. And carbon still has four bonds. Try not to put too many bonds on there. Oops, that's a very messy one. Fix it a little bit. Try again. And that's propanamide. So what would we name this other compound? Well, now we have to realize that this structure has parts like your acetamide, but it's got an extra group on it. It's got an extra carbon on the nitrogen. And so we're going to have to specify where it is. That is an N-methyl group on the nitrogen, in other words, for acetamide. Yes, you could call it ethanamide. But that's honestly not common. There's a reason we call this a common name. So acetamide is that common acid. Amide, however you wish to pronounce it. But that would be this compound to the right. Um, ethanamide would be the IUPAC name. Uh, don't expect to see it show up. But that one is not a primary amide. This one is now a secondary amide because there are one, two carbons on the nitrogen. Let's do some more secondary and tertiary amides. So they're going to have either one or zero hydrogens on the nitrogen because there are two or three carbons on the nitrogen. And so we'll precede the name with N to explain where these parts are. All right, so the first one we had over here was acetamide from the previous slide. Acetamide, easy enough. But the one over here to the right, oh, this one's different. This one's tertiary because there's one two, three carbons on the nitrogen. In this case, we have two methyl groups on the nitrogen. Oops. So it's dimethyl, but they're both on nitrogen. So you have to specify N for each of them in this case. Otherwise, they might be somewhere else. We have to be careful to make, be, make sure it's clear. And now we have to figure out what carboxylic acid was used to make the amide. In other words, this portion of the molecule, the part that had the carbonyl, was the carboxylic acid. And so a benzene ring plus a carbon for the acid is going to be benzoic acid turned into an amide, so it's benzamide. Don't try to put extra letters in there. People often do and turn it into longer names than they should. I have another example. See so how can we name these? The same kinds of rules apply. Um, not too tricky. This part here tells you the amide part, the black part in each of these diagrams. Each of them is a two carbon um, chunk next to the carbonyl. So acetamide is your last name again. We're keeping them simple then, aren't we? And this one has two methyl groups on the nitrogen. So N, N, dimethyl. Whoops, don't need a space, but I left one. Acetamide names that compound. This one would be tertiary. So you have one, two carbons other than the carbons here named attached to nitrogen. This one is also acetamide. Oh, boy, sorry about that. This tool has its moments. 
Um, the one on the right is also a sedimid. Again, it's got how many, count the carbons on the nit or nitrogen and be sure they're all described in the name. So here's one, two, three. They're all described in the name. This time they're two different groups. It's not di something. One is methyl, one is ethyl. Again, alphabetical order is going to be your friend. They're both on nitrogen, so specify that. N ethyl, N methyl comes second because of alphabetical order, and then no necessary space, a sediment. Simple enough if you keep track of the fact that everything needs to be carefully described. All right, now, just because, let's try some names and go to the structures instead of going the other way around. Practice is always a good idea. N-methyl sediment. Ah, we won't skip that one. We've already done it. So N-ethyl, N-phenyl, benzamid. Well, we saw benzamid a moment ago. So benzamid means there's got to be a benzene ring. It's going to have another carbon in order to put the carbonyl on it. Can't go in the ring. And it's going to be an amide, therefore you've got to put that on the carbonyl. And to complete the structure, ethyl has to be on nitrogen. So one, two more carbons. What else is needed to be complete? There's going to be a phenyl group. Oh my goodness, that one throws us off. So phenyl is another benzene ring. Phenyl is benzene as a substituent. And so this part over here, if my tool would talk to me, there we go, is the phenyl group, and ethyl it should be familiar. Ethyl is here. They're both on the nitrogen, and those both have their N in, pr in front of their names to explain. Whoops, oh, that was really unhelpful. Let me fix that. Pardon me, I'll pause it. Okay, now it's better. So ethyl and phenyl are both explained in that name. Wow. Let's try another one. This is a wacky one. It's just to prove that we can do more fun things. So we have another benzamide, which is the same idea as this one. So let's put on our benzene ring. And benzamide means it comes from benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is really kind of common in a variety of places. You can start reading labels on things like even Coca-Cola, and you'll see it. Then this much with one nitrogen becomes benzamide. When we put on N and dimethyl, that means the two methyl groups better be on the nitrogen. So we'll put one here, one here. Remember, nitrogen typically has three bonds unless you want to make it into a salt. And these are not examples that are going to be salts, not amides. They don't. And that takes care of our NN dimethyl. But what about parachloro? Whoa. Oh, think again. Well, where does that have to be? It's para relative to the position of the benzamide. And so you put it on the ring in the pair position. Hmm, interesting, but not impossible. Hopefully you don't find too many awfully challenging ones. Okay, gang, good luck with your studying. I hope these examples help you if you needed more practice with these things. Don't forget to use rework for practice on your homework. Ask questions as needed. Good luck with your studying.